Alrighty, so on to chapter 6. So chapter 6 is going to look at rational equations and expressions. So rationals meaning not involving a radical symbol. Um, we're going to be working with polynomials and quadratics and things like that and working with them within an equation throughout this chapter. So a couple of our goals of 6.1 we're going to just start looking at just rational expressions right now and we'll deal with equations later um, so just kind of one side of the equation um, so our goal is to one we're going to have to look at the denominator and determine whether that's um, or determine parts of it that are non-permissible um, if you were to substitute in a value for x what value would make your denominator zero and therefore not a real number? Um, <clears throat> and then we're going to simplify these expressions as much as we can and be able to, to model situations with those expressions. So whenever we're working with algebraic fractions, remember that um, when we have the form A over B, um, there's something specific that can't be in the place of B, and we, we know what that is. That is zero. Um, any value divided by zero would make the value, um, uh, make the expression a non-real non number. Um, it would be undefined. So looking at equations like this, we want to find out what value for x we could put in that would make it equal to zero. So the strategy is to find out what would make it equal to zero. So you take just that bottom piece that has a variable in it, the denominator, and we're going to make it equal to zero to find out what would, what x value we would have to put in there to get a zero. So we solve this simple algebraic equation um, for x. So if I wanted to solve for x, I divide both sides by 2. Um, 0 divided by 2 is 0. So considering this equation up here, if I were to substitute in 0 for x, 2 times 0 would give me that 0. Any other value would give you uh, a real number that you could divide by. So zero doesn't work. So the non-permissible value um, for 2x is zero. If we were to do this one, same deal, you set it up um, equal to zero and you find out what value would go in the place of this to make the denominator equal to zero. Now looking at this you can recognize it's probably plus seven. Um, so 7 minus 7 would give us that 0. But how do we find that algebraically? So you set it equal to 0. You add 7 to both sides to solve for x. Uh, plus 7 equals 0 plus 7. And these would cancel and you find that x equals 7. So when you, what we're trying to do with this equation is find out what would make that piece equal to 0. <coughs> So in this case, that would be 7. So plus 7 would be our non-permissible value. Again, any other value in there would, would work. Um, if you use 6, you would have negative 1. You can divide by negative 1. If you had 8, you would have plus 1. You can divide by uh, plus 1. That's all fine. But 7 would give you 0. What about when you're multiplying two binomials together? This looks more complicated than it actually is. It's just that, remember that when you're multiplying two numbers, if you multiply by zero, the whole thing becomes zero. So essentially, we just need to find out each of these pieces. So there's going to be two non-permissible values here. We want to find out what would make this zero, or we would find out what makes this zero. Either of those would give you a denominator equal to zero. So let's first do x minus 3 and find out what the non-permissible value is there. Add 3 to both sides and you find out that x is equal to 3. So let's just try that in the bottom and um, see what happens if we replace that x with, with now 3 and see 
how that turns out. And we're going to do the whole thing. Sorry, x minus 1. There. Oh no, I had that right. Um, x minus x minus 3 um, is now 3 minus 3, and then if we had 2 times 3 plus 1, then 3 minus 3, that's our 0, and it doesn't really matter what this turns out to be because we're multiplying by 0. Even though this turns out 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7, even though that turns out to be a real number, um, this 0 value, 0 times 7, is 0. The whole thing would equal 0 if I used one of these non-permissible values. So let's find out the other one. Um, find out the value for 2x plus 1. Um, find out what would make that equal to 0. And so you subtract 1 from both sides. And then you divide both sides by 2. And you find that x, if x were to equal negative 1 half, then you would have a zero in this piece. So if you did negative one half, um, so two times negative one half would be negative one. Negative one plus one is your zero. And then zero times, who cares what this turns out to be, zero times anything is zero. The whole thing would be zero. So we have two non-permissible values here, and we'll list them as negative one half and and positive 3. So you guys can pause it here and try these three out. Um, I will let you, I will make a note of a couple things here. Uh, remember that when you're square rooting you need to take the plus minus and with this, this is a um, this is a trinomial. You'll need to factor that into two binomials and then do what we did here and find the two non-permissible values. So pause it and give it a try. So I'll solve them now. Um, so x minus three, I wanna find out what the non-permissible value is. Um, you set it equal to zero, and then add three to both sides, and find if you had positive three there, that would be your non-permissible value. For this one, um, set x squared minus 9 equal to 0, add 9 to both sides, and then square root both sides. And when you square root 9, remember you got to take the plus minus of the 9 to see that there's two possible values there. Um, positive 3 or negative 3 would give you the same thing. Just to eyeball it up here, um, if it was 3 squared, my, uh, 3 squared is 9, minus 9, that's 0. If I had negative 3 squared, that's still negative 3 times negative 3, which is positive 9. That would still give us 0. Um, something to note here, though, something you need to really start uh, recognizing, is that when you have a square number minus another perfect square number, um, if you recall, that's called something called a difference of squares. Um, so x squared minus 9, that factors out to be x minus 3 times x plus 3. Um, when, you, when you factor this as a polynomial, you need to remember that this, this, is a kind of, this kind of is a trinomial. It's just got a 0x in between. Um, if you were to multiply this out, x times x is x squared, x times 3 is plus 3x. Um, let's write it out. Um, so plus 3x and negative 3 times x is negative 3x and then negative 3 times 3 is negative 9. This plus 3x and minus 3x cancels, or cancels is, is a poor word, it equals 0x. And what you're left with is x squared minus 9 um, when you have this difference of squares set up. So when you, when you see this perfect square minus another perfect square, um, you can, like, you're going to take the square root of this and then the square root of this um, uh, and keep the, or sorry, um, take the, the square root of this and then plus minus that. And you'll be able to jump right to your binomial. 
Notice how um, solving the non-permissible value for this gets you to the same result if you were to solve the two non-permissible values here. Um, solving for this, you couldn't use plus 3, and solving for this, you wouldn't be able to use negative 3. So you end up at the same, the same result. Let's do the last one. We're going to have to factor this uh, trinomial. So x minus 4x plus 3 um, is, uh, we, we want to find out what two values can multiply together to give you plus 3, but add to give you negative 4. So uh, find the factors of 3. 3 can be done with um, 1, or not comma, um, 1 times. 1 times 3, um, those are, it's a, it's a, um, it's a prime number, so uh, this is the only values that can multiply together to give you this. So we want to see if there's some way of adding these together that could give us negative 4, and that's if we used negative 1 and negative 3. <coughs> so that's what you split the equation into. When there's, when there's no coefficient here, you can change that into x minus 1 times x minus 3. And then find the two non-permissible values for the binomials that come from this. Um, so in this case, um, x minus 1 equals 0. Um, add 1 to both sides. x couldn't be 1. And try putting that in there. So if I did 1, uh, like let's, let's verify it. If I did 1 minus 4 times 1 uh, plus 3, then um, just realized something. This is supposed to have a square. Um, anyway, um, so one squared uh, minus four times one uh, would be negative three plus three, and that doesn't work. Um, and uh, so find so non-permissible value of one. If I had x minus 3, I um, want to find the non-permissible value there, add 3 to both sides, and you find x is equal to um, 3. So if you tried putting 3 in there, so 3 squared minus uh, 4 times 3 plus 3. So this is 9 minus 12 plus 3. 9 plus 3 is 12. 12 minus 12 is 0. So that also doesn't work. So either of these in this quadratic, uh, in this trinomial, wouldn't wouldn't work out. All right. So simplifying them, simplifying means to um, factor out the biggest thing you can. And um, so from a binomial like this, you look for a shared term between the two. And then in a trinomial, you want to split it into two binomials. And if there's anything shared between the top and the bottom, you can simplify it in the exact same way that if I were to um, take 5 over 10, um, I could simplify that to 1 over 2. You divide the top and the bottom by the same number. If I had uh, 2x divided by 10x, um, you take the, the top number and divide it by the bottom number. 2 divided by 10 would be 1 over 5. x divided by x cancels out, and that would be 1 fifth. And of course, if I have 2 of something and I divide it by 10 of those same things, you should have 1 fifth of those. So simplifying just means looking at the numbers, looking at the variables, looking for some common thing in the top and the bottom that you can simplify by. In a binomial, um, note that something like this, I can't take like the negative 6 and divide it by 2. Um, it has to be taken as units. So let's, um, let's see how we can turn this into two separate units rather than just one. So this 3 and this 6, they both share a factor of 3. So I can pull a 3 out from that, and it becomes x minus 2. Um, so 3 times x minus 2 um, would, would give you 3x minus 6 right back. So you're just looking for the biggest thing that they both share. In this case, they both share a factor of 3, and that's what you pull out. If they both had an x here, you could also factor out the x. Um, now, the bottom piece, this trinomial here, 
Um, we're going to have to do a little bit more with that. Um, we need to find what to decompose this middle term into. So do the um, you do 2 times the minus 10, um, and we're going to factor um, negative 20. We want to find out two terms, two factors of negative 20 that can add together to give you positive x, or positive 1. So different factors of 20, we can do 1 times 20, um, we can do 2 times 10, and we can do 4 times 5. So the only one here that can possibly get you um, a negative, or sorry, a positive one is this combination right here, the 4 and the 5. If you leave the 5 as positive and you make the 4 negative. So that's what we're going to decompose the middle term into. So it becomes 2x squared, um, doesn't matter which one you put where. Actually, I'll keep the negatives together because that works out a little bit nicer. Um, so I'll keep the plus 5 over here, so plus 5x, and then minus 4x. So I split that middle term, that 1x, into positive 5x minus 4x, and then keep your negative 10. <coughs> now the strategy here um, is to group the first two terms and group the second two terms and add them. Uh, so the biggest thing that 2x squared plus 5x squared shares, 2 and 5 don't share any factors, but x squared and x do, so we'll pull it an x, and it becomes 2x plus 5. And between negative 4x and negative 10, they both share uh, a negative, uh, negative 2, so uh, plus negative 2. And if I pull a negative 2 out of there, I would have 2x and negative 2 out of 10 is plus 5. If you've done this right, your set of brackets should be the exact same. So now from these two terms, you factor out the x minus 5. Uh, sorry, x, 2x plus 5. So if I take the 2x plus 5 out of these two terms, I'd be left with x and then minus 2. So x minus 2. So this is the binomial you get from this trinomial. So let's put that into here. So 2x plus 5 times x minus 2. So in the top we're multiplying a 3 times x minus 2. In the bottom we're multiplying a 2x plus 5 by x minus 2. We can... Um, since we're multiplying by the same value here, x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 can, uh, would, would equal 1. So they effectively cancel out. So x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 is gone. And now we're left with 3 over 2x plus 5. Now if there's anything further that's shared between these, you've got to factor that out as well. Um, but there's nothing further I can factor out of 2x plus 5, um, and 3 doesn't share anything with both of them. So that's as far as we can go. So this is simplifying an equation. Let's do a couple more. So uh, I want you guys to try this one first. So you're um, going to get you to pause it in a sec here, but... Have a look at the polynomial, and this polynomial, and this polynomial. Um, so these trinomials, you're going to want to factor them into binomials, and then look and see if there's anything in the top and the bottom that is shared. And if so, cancel them out. If not, it's already in its simplest form. So pause it and give it a go. So I'll try now. <clears throat> so this, this bottom piece here, um, we just did that one. We've uh, uh, found that if we do uh, uh, the uh, two things to multiply together to give you plus 3, but add together to give you negative 4, um, would be um, negative 3, negative 1. So let's, let's just jump right to that. So x minus 3 and x minus 1. 
And then having a look at the top and the bottom, they both share um, a multiple of x minus 3. So we can cancel those out, and we'll be left with 1 over x minus 1. And nothing further you can do here. Don't be tempted to do the 1 and the minus 1. Um, don't factor those out because like this is adding. It's different when you're when you're multiplying. So you're multiplying these two terms together. When you're adding, you would have to when when you're adding you have to take the whole thing. So it's it is okay to do to cancel out an x minus 3 and an x minus 3 because I'm considering the whole piece. Um, but I, I couldn't take a 3 that say if there's a, a factor of 3 in the bottom, I can't just eliminate the minus 3 in the top. All right. <coughs> so any non-permissible values here, what we should do first. Um, so this simplifies to 1 over x minus 1, um, but there's something specific that can't go in the x. So the, the non-permissible value we find by making that equal to 0, and then adding 1 to both sides, and we find that if x were to equal 1, um, the denominator would be 0. So we can't use 1. All right, two things to factor here. We did just do this one as well. Um, the two time, uh, 2x squared plus x minus 10, um, that factored out to, to be 2x plus 5 times x minus 2. Um, so let's jump right to that. It's work smart, not hard. So 2x, um, what was it, 2x plus 5, and then um, x minus 2 x minus 2. Now the bottom one we haven't solved yet, so let's let's solve it. Um, let's uh, not solve it, let's factor it. So x squared plus 3x minus 10. I want to find two things that multiply together to give you minus 10 and add together to give you plus 3. So let's have a look at our factors of 10. And we can do 1 and 10, and we can do 2 and 5, and that's it. The only possible combination to give you a 3 is with this 2 and the 5, if you make the 2 a negative. So negative 2 plus 5 would be our 3. So um, there's no coefficient here, so you don't need to worry about decomposing. You could just jump right to um, x minus 2 and x plus 5. Now, having a look in the top and the bottom, they both share a factor of x minus 2, so we can cancel those. And then we're left with 2x plus 5 over x plus 5. Again, don't be tempted to uh, eliminate the x plus 5, because this is two of those values. This is only, or sorry, this is two x's plus the 5. This is only one x plus 5. Um, if there's something further we could factor out of them, perhaps there's more we could do. Um, but at this point, um, there's there's nothing further to do. Um, I, I could do some fraction equivalency stuff here and and do some multiplying, but we would we would never be able to come to a conclusion there. Um, this is simplest form. We do need to find an, the non-permissible value for the bottom here. If I were to uh, so make that that bottom equal to 5, and if I were to substitute in, or uh, sorry, make it equal to 0, um, and then solve for x, and you get x equals negative 5. So if I were to use negative 5 here in the equation, um, that would make this equal to 0, and therefore be no good. Um, interesting little side note, um, this X minus, uh, this x minus 2 that's here as well, um, we don't need to worry about that being a non-permissible value um, because that would get simplified out from the top. Um, so it, it doesn't make the, the bottom equal to 0. All right, some questions for you guys to try. Thanks for joining.